Crystal Palace, Crystal Palace, where he goes fly. So two of Palace Ladies Podcast. I'm Ronan Howard and I'm joined once again by presenter of the channel, Matt Hall. Matt, how are you doing today? I'm very good, thank you, Ronan. Uh, once again, delighted to be here, delighted to be doing this fantastic podcast. We've got plenty to talk about tonight, so I'm really looking forward to it. How are you doing, Ronan? How are you today? Yeah, I'm doing very well. Excited for this sec- is it episode two of the podcast. Very excited for it. Um, we've got a lot to talk about as well. From, uh, we have indeed. Yeah, um, today we'll be uh, gone. talking about the under-16s Reds, uh, the development reserves and the development and first team, won't we, Ronan? Yeah, so uh, let's kick off this second episode with talking about the um, res- talking about the under-16s Reds um, and how they've been getting on recently. They had a game last Sunday um, against... Um, when, who was it again? Sorry, go on. Um, um, it, I can't pr- Mosley. Uh, I Mosley, can't. Pr- I don't know if that's the correct pr- pronunciation, but it was Mosley or Mosley. I think it's pronounced one of those two ways, but I'm not 100 percent sure which one of those it is, or if it is one of them. But uh, that's the team they were playing. Yeah, we've got um, a match ball from Nina Miller, who is the manager of the under 16s. So um, I'll read that out now. Um, so. The CPFC under-16 Reds were up against one of their biggest rivals in the form of Mosey Juniors FC. Conditions at Riddles Down were not good, weather-wise with very strong winds, making it hard to move the ball around. Palace went 1-0 up after Hannah Page passed the ball to Gabby Howe, who scored with a superb strike. 
Tia put Palace 2 0 up off shortly after with another fantastic goal. The second half consistent of some very good football played by Palace and Mosey never really looked threatening. 2 0 up at half time and started second half with the wind against us. Mosey came out strong as they could see themselves going out of the League Cup. Midway through the second half, Mosey pulled one back, but Palace should have got another two, but couldn't capitalise. On, on substitute, Molly Howe hitting the crossbar twice within minutes of coming on. Naomi, Ri Naomi Richards finally scored a third for Palace. Another great goal. Mosey got a second a minute before time, but had no time to hunt left to hunt for an equaliser, so CPFC under 16s win 3-2 and on in, onto the next round of the League Cup. Tia Scott Coleman was the deserved player of the match and the next game is at home to QPR in the league. So it looked like the under 16 Reds had a fantastic game, they're winning 3-2 against their biggest rivals in the cup. Um, had, reading that match for, how do you think they played that? Well, it sounds like uh, they played really, really well, and it sounds like it was a really entertaining game. You know, obviously the result in the balance until the very end. Um, and big thank you, obviously, to Nina for giving us that match report. Yeah. Um, I think a special mention went out to Jess Wills as well, the goalkeeper, yeah, who uh, commanded her area saves. very well and uh, made some fantastic saves. So, save, sorry. So, a special uh, mention to her. Uh, and yeah, it's good to see them win their second match in a row. Yeah. Obviously, having won four-one uh, the week before uh, on the back of a couple of defeats uh, in a row. So, fingers crossed, it's it's very much back to uh, you know good run of form for the under 16s. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's always good to get down and and see their training and see how they're getting on. So um, yeah, very good setup there, and uh, very very pleased to uh, to see them through to the next round. Yeah, this at the minute they're sixth in the Surrey Girls League. We have 18 points. They've won six, lost three, and they've got plus two, plus two goal difference. So um, they're looking well. They're looking good in the league so far. Um, and they've got with one to two games in hand over some teams. So if they win a right, yeah. couple of uh, games, they'll probably move up some couple of places. Exactly, Ronan. And uh, obviously that that says a lot about the team. You know, they are in a good position in the league. Um, having played one to two games, like Nina's told us, uh, yeah. less than some of the opposition teams. And obviously, you know, they've won double the amount of games they've lost and they've got a positive goal difference as well. So um, signs are looking good for them and uh, fingers crossed uh, that will carry on and just get uh, increasingly better. Yeah, the next uh, two fixtures are at home to QPR, as I've said, and at home to AFC Wimbledon, respectively. So, hope they get the next couple of games. Hope they next get a few the next three points out of that couple of games. Let's hope so, and uh, we're going to be uh, we're going to be reading out coverage of that uh, on our on our next episodes of our podcast and uh, and our live shows. I'm yeah. sure as we're kept up uh, up to like date very well with the under 16s through the uh, through the various people that we we know in the under 16s. And yeah, like Ronan says, we did do a live show last night, the courtesy of Mix LR. Um, and usually we'll be doing them every week. This podcast is obviously every two weeks. Uh, yeah. The live shows will be every week, um, sometimes on a Sunday, sometimes on a Monday. But uh, it very much depends on, on what happens on a Sunday, really. Yeah. So um, keep an eye on our Facebook page, which you can find by typing in cplfc.com. TV and giving us a like. Uh, that is where you'll find all the information about our up and coming features with the channel included in these podcasts. So do keep an eye on that. Yes, um, so I think that's the under 16s out of the way. Um, you got anything it else to say? It is indeed, it? yeah. No, just uh, like I said, it's a real pleasure to be associated with them um, and it's uh, fantastic to, to get down there and, uh, and see what they're doing and see uh, how Gareth and Adam and uh, and Nina are, are organising them all and uh, what the training sessions are like. So, yeah, um, good luck to them in their next two matches yeah. and we look forward to catching up with uh, with how they've got on. Yeah, so uh, now next move on to the development. Matt, you've got a match report for their game this plus I didn't know, haven't you? I have got the match report um, courtesy of assistant manager Kirk Scott. So thank you very much, Kirk, for that. Uh, we've got a little bit of funny uh, funny stuff to read out after I've gone through the serious stuff first, so let's get that out of the way. Um, 
Now, as uh, those of you who didn't listen to our live show last night uh, may not know, the Palace girls travelled to North London to face Tottenham Lanes looking for their third win on the bounce and they didn't disappoint with an impressive display of hard work, determination and fantastic team play. It was a cagey first half where both teams seemed to give each other too much respect rather than getting a firm grip on the game and chances were few and far between. Lauren was assured at the back, playing her second game for the development, giving a calming influence on the rest of the girls, and Alice was her usual hard-working self in the middle of the park with full-backs Kashela and Sadi. I think that's a correct pronunciation. We'll go on to my poor pronunciations a bit later. Linking well um, in the midfield to support the attack. Becky Keat, I've said it right that time, Keat, was up and down the right flank, putting in a great shift. And it was her who produced a great cross on 20 minutes that evaded the on-rushing Tyra Wilson by inches. And Shea Palm then filled the fed, I keep saying felled for some reason, the busy Isabel Nichols who rolled the ball across her body and produced a stunning strike that flew just wide. But then came the defining moment of the half on 40 minutes, so just five minutes before half-time, where the referee awarded Palace a kick for handball just inside their own half. And as the Tottenham team were all protesting, the quick-thinking Abby Dean retrieved the ball, placed it down and played it beyond the uh, still protesting Tottenham defence who weren't concentrating on the match at all. Um, and Keely Nazareth was on the same wavelength and nipped in to receive the pass and finish superbly beyond the on-rushing keeper, which gave the girls a slim 1-0 advantage at half-time. And they managed to hold on in the second half. Uh, and a decent move in the 56th minute saw Hannah Donnelly play out to Shea Palmer on the left. And she embarked on a mesmerising run before passing inside to the excellent Dean, who switched for Keat on the right, who cut inside to find herself one-on-one -on -one with the keeper, but who made a terrific save coming out to retrieve the ball at her feet. Uh, so it sounds like a really entertaining match there once yeah. again, despite the, uh, the mid-1. Neil scoreline, Ronan, and uh, yeah. Kirk, to sum it up, said that it was a truly fantastic team effort as the girls clinched their third win in a row and continue to develop in this tough league and learn from game to game. They've really put their bodies on the line for this victory and they continue to impress with their pride and passion for the badge. Again, it was very hard to pick a player of the week, but for her dominance in midfield and quick thinking to set up Nazareth for the winning goal, we'll give it to the excellent Abby Dean. So congratulations to everyone involved with the reserves as uh, really that is a, a fantastic result. Uh, especially considering that uh, last season, Ronan, um, Tottenham development uh, yeah. beat Palace 3-2. So certainly moving forwards uh, in that respect. Before I go on, have you got any points to make on that? No, I just wish them luck in the next couple of uh, games and get them all in born three points. And I think they've got a few tough games coming up. Um, so I hope They have, indeed. Um, yeah. Let's let's give you some, some information about that. Um I'm looking at the league table now. Um, there are 11 teams in the league and the Palace development currently sit in seventh. And the reason for me that that is so um, impressive is that what Kirk's actually told me today is that this league is in fact an adult first team league apart from Watford, Wimbledon, QPR, Spurs and uh, Palace. So all of the other teams you see in there are women's first teams. Um, so all of the players in the Palace development side are 17 or 18 years old. So for them to be competing against, um, you know, much older players uh, in, in the form of some other teams really does, you've got to give them credit for that. You know, it can't be easy. Um, and yeah, uh, they're seventh in the league, having played 10 matches, winning five, lose, uh, drawing none, sorry, and losing five. They've got a goal difference of minus nine at the moment, and they've got 15 points altogether. Let's see if we can get their upcoming fixtures. They're actually playing... Uh, uh, Tottenham Hotspur development again, it looks like, on Sunday um, before travelling to Brentford, um, who are bottom of the league at the moment with just one point all season. So hopefully that'll be another win. Uh, they've then got AFC Wimbledon, um, followed by various other fixtures, which we'll go on to in later podcasts. Any comments on that, Ronan, on their season so far? Um, again, they've got back to back games um, playing Tottenham. Like, you know, you see in the first team, Palace, you see, I know Cholton had QPR one, then they played them again the next week. Um, and that's got, they did, that's yeah. got to be tricky. Um, and so, fingers crossed, they get the more important three points, as I said already, and good luck to the girls. Absolutely, yeah. Um, now, let's go on to something a bit more lighthearted now. Um, I have been absolutely slammed today, and this 
is absolutely shocking on my part. So, part sorry, see, I can't even speak now, Ronan. How bad am I? Um, <laughs> this is absolutely shocking on my part, given that I'm a stadium announcer and and various things that I've done. I have to say all sorts of names. Um, I got a message from Kirk earlier, and he said. Um, Basically, that uh, I absolutely made a dog's dinner of pronouncing one of the names last night. He didn't say that, but uh, that's why that's why I'm taking from it. Yeah. I accidentally said Becky Kayate, I think, or Kayate, or something like that. Yeah. And her name is actually pronounced Keat. So Becky, I do ap- apologise for that. Um, <laughs> that's all I can say is it won't happen again, and uh, I will learn f- from my mistakes. And and, yeah. I, and I've uh, I've. Um, I've really been trying hard now to make sure I'm pronouncing. Yeah. pronouncing oh, shall I just give up pronouncing the names right? <laughs> um, so, yeah, Kirk reckons there's going to be quite a bit of banter going around about that at training oh, tomorrow. So yeah. uh, let's hope I'm That'll not, uh, I'm not mocked. That'll onto the page, I guess. Too much. Yeah, yes, made, so made I, I think so. Um, <laughs> Got to make sure I'm not bullied for it, Ronan. Please yeah. look after me, yeah? I think I might have been framed. <laughs> Oh, dear, all right. <laughs> let's not go there, shall we? <laughs> oh, get 250 quid for the club. Uh. Actually, Ronan, now you say that, it sounds more appealing. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Cool. Um, so, yeah, good, so, luck. Yes. good luck to the girls next Sunday. And fingers Absolutely. Crossed move, up to the, uh, move, move, move up and onwards. And we'll be uh, featuring that result and hopefully some comments from Kirk in our next live show, yep. which will be on Sunday or Monday. I've got a feeling it's going to be on the Monday again. But yeah. uh, could be wrong, so keep an eye on the page for more details right, on that. Monday, because we've got a uh, filming and we've got work Sunday filming for the first thing. We have, we have indeed. So let's let's say let's put it out there now, Ronan, shall we? That the next live show will be on the Monday. Yep. Put about okay. seven forty-five ish. Seven forty-five to eight o'clock, but uh, the time will be confirmed on the page. Yeah. Closer to it. Um. Anything else you want to say about the development? Um, I just want to give a big shout out to Kirk, uh, who really has been very helpful, um, yeah. both yesterday for the live show and today, who's uh, provided me with uh, all these match reports, comments, and uh, you know, um, basically slagged off my pronunciation. <laughs> I'm only joking, Kirk. <laughs> no, um, basically helped me to pronounce the names correctly. So uh, no, I do appreciate that. Um, and yet again, it's really, really good that we're now, um, you know, covering more of the Palace yeah. Ladies sides. We're not just about the first team. We're not just about you know the reserves and, and the development. We're about the under 16s, and we're hoping now um, in a few weeks as well to catch up with a few of the younger teams as well, um, yeah. and uh, really make it make it a holistic coverage of everyone. Yeah, so we don't feel, yes, Ronan, we don't that, want, that's we don't want people to feel left out. No, we don't indeed. Um, just like Richie felt a bit left out. We did an interview with him, and he was really really happy. So check out the channel for our interview yeah, with yeah. Richie Callahan. It's really that's worth the watch. www.youtube.com/cpfc.tv Thanks to Ronan for getting our customised URL there. No worries. So, well, Ronan, um, that's it from me on the development side. I believe you've got some uh, content from the development reserves for us yeah, now. Yes, I have. Um, we've got a few notes. Um, find them here, go. Um, the development the development reserves are on beat are on an unbeaten run in the league and well as in the cup and the top of the league as well. Um, I've actually got their league table up. Fantastic. Um, so, yeah, they are first with 25 points. They've won seven, drawn four, and lost none. They've played 11. Fantastic. So that is the fantastic. Um, and then you've got the top of the... You've got the bottom of the league, Greenhouse Sports FC, what a name, who are Love 11th, they're bottom, and they've only got 14. Great. So they're 20. Did you, sorry, did you say... Gr- Greenhouse. <laughs> Greenhouse Sports I'm, FC. I'm, I'm guessing that they're, they're quite an eco-friendly team then. <laughs> yeah. Maybe they're paying uh, too much attention to, to growing their plants rather than uh, playing football. <laughs> no, I'm only joking. Um, yeah, no, let's uh, let's move on from that one. Yeah, yeah. What, what a name. We love the name. That's what I can say. I've never seen the team play before, but we absolutely love that name. <laughs> Cracking up here. Shout out to Greenhouse Sports. <laughs> Why don't you stop doing the doing the environment uh, a lot of good. <laughs> this right. this podcast, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you have been warned, has some absolutely cringeworthy banter. So uh, please laugh along with it's us. Not, so we really un- appreciate that. It's unedited, so whatever you hear, we haven't edited a thing. Um, exactly, so that's the best do, way I think. Ronan. What we do is we just 
stop the podcast and upload it straight away. So right. that's the best way, I think. Only. Yeah, moving on. I, to I, I like doing it. I like doing it that way. Moving up to development reserves. The next game I'm, I'm going to probably say it's wrong. Victoria. Victoire, I think it's Victoire. pronounced. Victoire, is it? Victoire I could ladies. be completely wrong as well. <laughs> yeah. We're struggling with our pronunciation oh, tonight, big Victoire time. Victoire ladies away. Um, that's a two o'clock kickoff, and then they've got uh, Clapham United reserves. Uh, that's the twentieth of December, and that's a home. That's the last game I think for them. So I think, yeah, I think that's it. Only got a little bit of there. Only well, yes, uh, thing. I I believe if I if I remember rightly, and uh, Kirk, I'm sure will correct me if I'm wrong, that he actually mentioned. They uh, won their game last week as well, um, and I can't, can't remember who the life for the life against. But uh, if they have in fact won Hello, a few guys, games in a row, uh, well, we know they've won a few games in a row because they're on a yeah. strong unbeaten run. It's absolutely fantastic to hear, um, and I'm really hoping that we can uh, actually feature these guys a bit more because uh, I know Ronan. It was only uh, it was only tonight that we actually found out we were going to cover the development reserves. Yeah. So uh, it's definitely a team that we would like to cover a bit more. And uh, yeah, good luck to them, and it's uh, it's great to see them on uh, on a good run. Yes, I think that's it from the development reserves. Absolutely. Now I'll move on to the first team. Quite a few. Now we've got a lot to talk about here. Um, we have right. So we've got. We're going to play the commentary from the Coventry game. They play the Covent commentary from the Coventry game. The and Coventry then, commentary. Yeah, then we're going to play the. Clint Lancaster interview of the Coventry game. Um, we are indeed. Yeah. So uh, yeah, this is the. Should we, should we just go on. Should we just before we, before we go into it, Ronan? Sorry to interrupt you. Um, I just want to say um, that the other week we uh, we had the idea of uh, well, to be to be fair to us, we have been thinking of doing this for a while. We just didn't know how. Um, yeah. And uh, we did speak to James, who's our graphic designer, James Turner. Big shout out to him for doing all the uh, graphic details you see on our videos. Um, and he said he'd be confident uh, putting some, syncing some commentary from us into the videos when he edits them. So um, that was done. Um, and it, we were there for about 20 minutes, half hour. Um, I had a few takes, didn't I, Ronan, on some of them? Yeah, he did. Yeah. Um, you know, there was, some, there was somewhere I just could not get the words out of my mouth. There was somewhere I just burst out laughing, and on a couple of occasions, I just, I just broke down and started banging my head against, uh, against the desk. So, um, it wasn't an easy experience, and actually, I find it really uh, a lot easier to commentate on a live game. We didn't have any team sheets with us, um, but here, ladies and listeners yeah. all around the world, this is the result of our hard work on this. Right, here we go. Crystal Palace and Coventry United came into today's FA Women's Premier League plate match very much in good form on all fronts this season. Palace top of their league at the moment, having only lost one game in all competitions all season, whilst Coventry United sit fourth in the league above Palace, having only lost twice in all of their matches. Sustained pressure here now from Coventry United. Really looking to get on the attack now. Balls played in fields to Dermody. And now Libby Piggott. Piggott, nice lofted ball forwards to Amber Hughes. Hughes is closing in on goal now. Cross comes across and Piggott taps it in. 1 0 to Coventry United. Amber Hughes coming with the cross. Yardley could only deflect it into the path of Libby Piggott. And it's 1 0 to the visitors. Throwing for the visitors, taken by Neville. Up towards Danny Selms. Controls the ball. Passes it back to Neville. Which is it infield to Livermore? Has a shot. Well held there by Chanel Yardley. Corner now to the visitors. Of course, Coventry leading Crystal Palace 1 0 at the moment. We're looking to make this one count once again as it swung in towards a sea of green shirts headed away. Balls come back out to the flank. Crossed in once again. Flicked header at goal. Great save by Yardley. Second shot cleared by Al Madonaho. And Livermore still trying to get the ball back in the box with the attentions of Donahoe. Great block by Donahoe and now eventually cleared by Lisa Haydock. And Palace on the attack now with Nisha Diet out towards Pammy McRoberts. Entering the penalty area now. Twisting and turning, looking for options. Goes back to Haydock. And now further back to Alex Elson. 
deep cross into the area. Igbaf Boa slips at the vital moment and spoons it over the bar. And this is on the counter-attack now. Hughes in towards Danny Selms. Could this be 2-0? Oh, it's a poor finish there from Danny Selms. And safe hands from Chanel Yardley. Selms really should have done a bit better there. Corner to Crystal Palace now. As they look for that all-important equaliser. Haydock to take. Swings it in. It's kind of blown away by the wind, but Elson takes it down. Back outfield towards Leanne Bell, who curls a shot high and wide. Crystal Palace kick off this second half. This FA Women's Premier League plate match. 1-0 down to their higher place rivals, Contra United. Tussling for possession here and it's broken now. Amber Hughes can run into the penalty area. Tussling with Alma Donho, but she gets through. Passes it infield towards Danny Selms. Can she turn and get the shot away? Passes it back to Pigger, who blasts it over the bar. Thrown here for the visitors to be taken by Neville, thrown forwards and chested down. Here's Dermody. Back to Neville, loses possession to Diet. And now Neville again. Oh, she's upended there by a combination of McRoberts and Diet. Free kicks whipped in by Livermore. It's a good delivery. Chanel Yardley punches it away. And it's still in the area. Looks to be collected by Hughes. Turns her player, gets the cross into the box. First time volley and it's into the net. Helen Darmody puts Coventry United 2-0 up and surely that will send them through to the next round of the FA Women's Premier League plate. Surely an unassailable lead now for the visitors. And the full-time score here at Hayes Lane is Crystal Palace ladies 0, Coventry United 2 and they progress through to the next round of the FA Women's Premier League plate. So that was the commentary from the Coventry game at home. Um, at Hayes Lane. It was. Gone. It was the Coventry from the comment. Oh my. A commentary goodness, from it the Coventry. It was the commentary from Coventry. Yeah. Um, now I just seeing as I'm sort of being quite self-critical tonight, I'm going to carry it on. Um, one thing I have worked out from that commentary, and one thing I don't want to do again, is I say the visitors are quite a lot. So I'm going to try and cut that out next time. But yeah. apart from that, I think um, I think it went really really well. And like we said last night, Ronan, there are a couple of areas where it didn't quite get synced up um, because it, it was a bit long uh, in parts. But um, James has done a really, really good job with that. And obviously, you know, yourself recording it all um, and helping me out. And obviously, um, I've got to give myself some credit. I did put quite a bit of effort in. So um, all three of us really have worked really hard on that. And, and we, hope, we hope you guys like it. Um, obviously, it is available on the channel with the match highlights. Uh, Clint, I know, was very happy with it. And... Uh, yeah, um, on to the next one. Yeah. Ah. Sorry about that. Um, this podcast is edited. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll skip it to a bit I need to play to. But yeah, so um, this is now Matt interviewing Clinton Mancaster over, over after the Coventry game. Co Coventry game. Hello guys, welcome back to CPLSC TV. Here in the wake of a 2-0 defeat, unfortunately, at home to Coventry United in the league above fourth place. Valiant effort from the girls, I'm joined by Clint Lancaster, first team coach. Clint, what were your thoughts on the game today? Um, it was a windy game, they're a good team, so the uh, league above us. So we knew that they were going to be quite, quite a tough side to come up against, but it's a good test for us. Um, so uh, we give it our best shot, we, we played some good stuff in in parts, <clears throat> but unfortunately we get the result today, but we move on. And things seem to pick up, seem to be playing quite a lot more fluently after the, after the break in the second half. What was said at half time? So we just, well I mean we just felt that we needed to get the ball down a little bit better, start, stop, you know, playing like we did against some of the teams in our own league. Um, yeah, the second half we, we started quite, quite brightly, and we did quite well, but um, Unfortunately, they managed to get the second goal in the, in the second half and really kind of put the game to bed. So, you know, we, we fought right to the end, but unfortunately, it wasn't quite enough. And obviously, <laughs> defeat is not something we're, we're used to really this season. I think that's only our second defeat in all competitions, if I'm, if I'm correct there. Um, how do you think the girls will, will bounce back from it? How do you, think, do you think they've got that ability to sort of bounce back straight away from that, considering we barely lost this season? Yeah, well, I mean, we'll get into training on Wednesday now and, um, you know, and we'll just regroup and go again. You know, it's it's one of those where, you know, like you say, it's certainly our second defeat of the season. Um, yet to lose in the league, 
So next weekend we've got a tough away game, um, MK Dons in the FA Cup. So we have to we have to work hard in training. Um, you know, myself, Dean, um, all the other staff will work hard, get the players motivated for, for next Sunday now. <coughs> Clint, thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers. So that was Glint and Lancaster talking about the Coventry game and how they played and talking about the preview of the game on Sunday against MK Dons. Looking, watching yes. that game, Matt, against Coventry, how do you think the goals played? Because as, as you've been saying, the defence Coventry had was a league above us. Their defence was super... It was. It, they were fantastic in defence. I've got to give them a shout out. Um, you know, you compare them to teams at this level, as we were saying last night, Ronan. And uh, no disrespect to teams in Palace's league, but Coventry's defence was, you know, quite clearly um, a step above. You know, uh, whereas this season, you know, would be quite easily scoring goals left, right, and centre. Uh, um, we didn't score against Coventry. Obviously, it was it was a two nil defeat. So. Um, every time we got the ball up top, they were very quick to react and they were very organised and resolute and they didn't really let us have a sniff at goal. Um, so you've got to give credit to their defence and uh, in the couple of chances that they did have, they, they managed to score two. So, uh, you know, clinical finishing from, from yeah. the, uh, the girls that scored as well. And uh, yeah, I just want to actually give a, a, give a shout out to Co Coventry quickly. Um, they did post our, uh, our highlights on yeah. their Twitter account and they were very, very sort of... Uh, um, what's the word, very complimentary towards, towards what we do. Um, they said our channel was fantastic and, uh, you know, they, they uh, tried to bring the uh, FA Women's Premier League attention to it, who I know are, uh, are keen on what we're doing as well. So it's great to get that feedback from, from an opposing team and it melt a lot. Yeah. Uh, and talking about shout, uh, other team looking at us, we know the Palace men's team have been looking at our channel as well, haven't they, Matt? Yeah. Um, we've heard that uh, I, I won't go into it too much, but we've heard some uh, some senior uh, figures at uh, at the Palace's men's side uh, know what's going on with the channel. Um, they 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 like what we're doing. They know what we're about, and they keep um, and on they it. Uh, they are keeping close eye on it, Ronan. Yeah, and and for you and me, you know, um, I just want to say to those of you that don't know, uh, Ronan and I are obviously very very close friends away from uh, away from all our work here. Uh, one day we were just walking down the street. And, uh, and we started yeah. talking about Palace Ladies and uh, somehow came up with the idea for this yeah. fantastic YouTube channel and all of these uh, little media things that we're doing. So yeah. for it to be our project from the start, you know, for now Palace men's team to be recognising us and obviously Chris Grierson and everything have been fantastic, um, yeah. you know, it is really special and uh, it certainly makes me very, very proud. Yeah, every week is a new idea, so we have a new idea every single week. We do, um, and like we were saying the other night, Ronan, we do have problems on match days, don't we, often with there's the music freezing week. up. There is a problem every there week, problem but there's week. also a good idea every week, so I think we yeah. kind of even ourselves out there a little bit. Um, nice. Sorry, what was that? It's balanced, but it's balanced out. Oh, it is, absolutely, yeah. And uh, no, it's really, really, I'm really proud, like I've been saying, of, of the work we've both put in. And obviously, yeah. it's fantastic that we've brought James in to to help with our graphic design and make our videos look a lot more professional. But, uh, yeah, um, just straying off topic a little bit there. Yeah. I, I'm really, really proud of what we've done um, and that we're, we're now beginning to get the recognition of it. The most important thing is that we're helping women's football get the recognition it deserves um, because it's been far too long in the shadows of the men's game uh, and now it's really, really coming out into its own and it's really pleasing to see that. Yeah, so going, uh, we've got a match report from Clinton Lancaster who he did recalled last night just before our uh, radio show, didn't he? Um, we did, yeah. Uh, Clint's, uh, Clint's been very helpful with the, uh, with the channel as well. He's a big fan, I know. Um, so, yeah, it's been, uh, he's suggested some ideas to us as well, you know, and, and been very good with interviews and things, as have all the Palace staff. So, uh, yes, we caught up with Clint uh, after the um, MK Dons match, which unfortunately we weren't able to go to uh, due to other commitments. Uh, we do like to do as many away games as we can. Um, but the match finished 4-0 to Palace, which uh, was a fantastic result and obviously sent us through to the next round. We're going to talk about the draw afterwards. So, Ronan, if you'd like to take the uh, Clint summary away when you're ready. Hi there, boys. You're right. Um, 
Yeah, no, the game itself was was good. We we played some we played some good stuff yesterday, predominantly in the second half. First half, um, we weren't quite at our best, but still managed to go one 0 up um, for a good bit of play and good finish from Alma. Um, but uh, no, we we had a good chat with the girls at half time. Um, the gaffers turned around and got out a fair few points um, to what he wanted to say, the, and the girls are coming the second half and, and really turned it on and scored some excellent goals. Um, some great goals from from uh, from all the girls really. Obviously won a penalty as well in the second half, which was tucked away nicely by Freya. Um, but the you know the third and the fourth goal in particular, um, Alma second and and Gemma's were some some good build up play. Um, and excellent finishes as well. Uh, I thought Gemma was out, absolutely outstanding. Um, for me, she was probably our, our best player on the pitch yesterday. She really was awesome up front. Um, was a threat every time she got the ball. She was strong. So, you know, that's just something that she offers every single week. Um, so it, it was really, really good. Good performance again as well from from Alma as well on the left hand side. She played very well, um, and we were very pleased with, with how how she how she did as well. Um, we knew MK Dons would obviously be a tough team, so we went there full strength, and um, you know we we put on a really good good display, and uh, we obviously got the better of them at home in the, the uh, in the league four two, and um, and we've managed to do it away as well in the in the FA Cup. So um, just found out today as well we've got to we move on to the next round. And we play West Ham, so hopefully we can build on what we did yesterday. Um, I know that I know for sure that um, Dean's got some things. Obviously, he wants to work on in training with the girls. Um, so we'll we'll catch up before before Wednesday, um, and we go again. You know, um, we don't take our foot off the gas at all. So, and like I say, you know, the gaffer's constantly onto the girls about focusing, um, and you know, concentrating on the task in hand and training. is it's always hard work, um, but. Obviously, it's paying off as as our results are are showing. So um, no, over, overall, um, cracking performance. So um, yeah, so we'll obviously catch up with you guys again soon. So yeah, that was Clinton's uh, match report, and um, he did say something very important is there, and we'll we will not move on to that in a minute. So yes, absolutely fantastic result. Um, that's the second time we've beat uh, we've beat MK Dons this season, and yeah. both of the matches, unfortunately, we haven't seen. Uh, oh. The first one was a four-two victory in the league, um, and this one, obviously, a four-nil in the uh, in the FA Cup, FA yeah. Women's Cup. So, absolutely fantastic from the girls. Credit to Alma for scoring twice, Gemma Bryan with another, and Freya hold away with a penalty. So, well done to the whole team for uh, producing another phenomenal result in this fantastic season. Yeah, this week we've they've got Bedford at home. Yes, let's talk about that, shall we? Yeah. Um, quite an interesting one. I've got the league table here in front of me. Uh, Bedford, uh, if you'd like me to go on to that, Ronan, are yeah. uh, bottom of the league at the moment in 12th place, whereas Palace are top. Um, they've played 14 matches, winning once, drawing once, and losing 12 times. Their goal difference is currently minus 57, wow. which is quite a lot. But... Having said all of that, uh, their most recent result um, was uh, a most recent game. Sorry, was against Luton Town, who yeah. are second in the league, and they only lost three um, two. Yeah. So to put up a very good fight against uh, a good team in Luton, uh, yeah. there must be something about them, you know, that that we've got to be wary of. So uh, it's not going to be uh, an easy game, I'm sure, and we should approach it as we do uh, any other game. And I'm sure we'll, we'll get to see we'll get to see the hard work that Dean. Uh, Dean will put them through tomorrow in training. Yes, um, I think of course we do come out with them three points, as I said, with every single team so far we've mentioned this evening. I think that's it with that fixture, isn't it, Matt? With Bedford. Uh, that's it for the Bedford one. Yeah, just obviously we will be uh, obviously recording highlights of that and hopefully uh, putting the commentary over them. So do keep an eye out on the channel for that. Probably Monday uh, or Tuesday they'll be uploaded. Yeah. Um, so fingers crossed. Uh, it's a positive commentary this time, yeah. uh, unlike the commentary against Coventry. <laughs> yeah, um, we have got some great news as well. Pammy McRoberts, who was called up to the national, uh, 
Northern Ireland squad um, game against Switzerland at home. Um, unfortunately, they did lose 8-1. And me, Matt and Clinton, Clinton Lancaster went, and probably the other girls went happy as well. When we saw a, a C next to her name, saying captain. Yes, we did, didn't we? We mentioned it to her and uh, I got it wrong. So, but... Yeah, so to think that actually Pammy was captain on her yeah. first appearance, we thought, wow, that is incredible. Uh, but it turns out it was just a mistake by yeah. uh, by the press or whoever was uh, whoever was responsible for, for controlling that game. But, you know, despite the scoreline, we've got to look at the bigger picture, Ronan. Um, yeah. This is uh, the first time there's been a player called up whilst at Palace. Uh, we've had international players in the past, but they've all been called up when they're at different teams. So, for the for, you know, for her to be called up when she's at Palace... Uh, really is is testament to herself and to the club, um, and I know she really enjoyed the experience herself. And uh, you can actually, uh, yeah. we actually did interview her before uh, her match, so you can check out that interview on the channel if you'd like to know uh, what her thoughts were beforehand. But uh, no, congratulations to Pammy. It wasn't a result what we wanted at all, um, but let's hope uh, that she's uh, involved uh, in the near future and that. Uh, that they yeah, can get some wins under their belts. Yeah. Um, now going on to something really important. I did say that uh, match review was about the FA Women's Cup draw. Matt, do you want to say who they got drawed to? Indeed, yeah. So uh, on Monday, it was uh, like the men's third round draw, was the women's FA Cup second round draw. So uh, where... Um, the Palace ladies were paired up with West Ham United, who we've already played this season uh, and are one of only two teams to have beaten us. Uh, they beat us 3-0 back in August in another cup competition. Um, yeah. But that was at their place. Um, and this match has been drawn at home, so it will be played at Bromley. Um, anyone listening, you know, your support will be appreciated on that day. Uh, it's a big opportunity for Palace. Um, and like Clint was saying, uh, West Ham aren't doing so well in the league above so this is an opportunity you know for, for a team in good form to perhaps uh, get past a, a higher team who aren't in in such good form so we're, we're really looking forward to that one yeah. Ronan aren't we yeah we are very looking forward to it and um, you know playing against West Ham they've also got YouTube channel and do we get beaten like 3-0 against them earlier in the season we did, yeah. That's what I was saying. I so I think the highlights are actually on that channel, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, or the Ham. highlights are on YouTube so, uh, somewhere. I can't remember on where. On YouTube. On Ronan, the West Ham if you could. Uh, channel. They are on the West Ham one. So check those out if you dare. Um, but obviously this time we're hoping for uh, a much more positive scoreline, aren't we? Yeah. Um, fingers crossed. It's, even if we win 1-0 and it's a goal in the 90th minute, I think everyone would be going mental. Do you know what? I think uh, that would be one of the best ways to win it. You know, it's not what we're used to with Palace. We're used to seeing Palace, you know, batter teams three or four nil, um, and you know, sort of be in control for the whole game. But I'm expecting this one to be a lot more tight, and uh, a late winner would would be most welcome. But uh, yeah, it's certainly one we're looking forward to, and we'll be doing a lot of build up to that on the channel. So do keep an eye out on that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's a 44 minute podcast this evening. Well, actually, Ronan, uh, we're not finished just yet. I've got a couple of other things that oh, I've right. written down. Um, so, Goal Cam is making a return to the highlights this week. For those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, um, have a look at the Ipswich highlights on the channel. You'll see that uh, our friend James, our graphics man, brought along his GoPro and stuck it behind the goal. So, we got a fair few of the goals on there in the first half. Unfortunately, the memory ran out in the second half yeah. and we couldn't get any. But uh, this time, we're hoping it will be uh, the whole game. Um, so hopefully when Palace do score, if and when, uh, we can get that on goal cam as well. And uh, we have had a question, Ronan, from a oh, listener. Yeah. Um, so we had it from Alfonso Greenbrook. And uh, we'd just like to thank Alfonso for, um, for writing in to us. Uh, we do like to hear from you guys. So if you do want to get in touch, just comment on the Facebook page or email cplfc at, uh, TV, sorry at gmail.com. That's cplfctv at gmail. Com. Now, Alfonso, like I've been saying, has written in and asked, do we think that Palace ladies can win the league? Ronan, what do you think? I reckon we will. Yeah, I reckon we will. Um, I'm beating the league so far. We've got a strong side. 
great defence, great midfield, great keeper, great strikers and a great management as well. Um, so I think we can do it. Yes, Ronan, I think we can as well. Um, obviously, being top of the league at this moment in time, we're five points ahead of a team in second place and we've played two games less than them. You know, And that really says something. Our goal difference, 27. Um, you know, we've really seen some phenomenal scorelines and performances this season. You know, it's really, really pleasing to see. Um, and yes, Alfonso, I, I really do believe that we will go on and win this league. Um, and it's going to be great to cover Palace at a higher level next season. Um, as we eventually progress forwards to to the level that we should be at. And, uh, you know, I think this will be a, a fantastic season for Palace uh, after the heartbreak, the late heartbreak of last year. Yeah, fingers crossed as well. So is that everything you've read out, Matt? I think that's everything from me. Yes, uh, it's been another fantastic podcast and we've uh, we've got a lot of stuff covered tonight, haven't we? So I think we could be uh, pleased with ourselves on that front. Yeah, it's a 45, 46-minute podcast as well. It's been great. Um that I just thank everyone who has watched the whole 46, 7 minutes. Absolutely. We're sure it was well worth it. And we hope you've enjoyed the banter that we've had as well. Uh, remember, this is all unedited. So uh, what you hear is what you get. Uh, nothing's taken out. So, uh, And yeah. I think that's the best way for it to be. So, yeah. yes, thank you to everyone who's listened. Really appreciate it. And if you uh, do have any feedback for us, do get in touch. Yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, Matt, do you want to end it? Yes, so once again, big thank you to everyone. Um, and we'll be back in a fortnight's time. But don't forget to check out our live shows in the meantime, which are every week, starting off next Monday. And not to mention the YouTube channel at www.youtube.com forward slash CPLFC TV. So from me and Ronan, wherever you are in the world, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or good night, and God bless. Thanks for watching. Feeling.